Where's my sandwich? Coming right up. So let's just dive right in. Let's talk about the cut of meat. Um, for roast beef sandwiches, if you're gonna do nice thin cut, maybe with a meat slicer, you're gonna want a, a leaner beef. <clears throat> Eye of round is a good one. Top round, bottom round, those are probably the three you'd wanna look for. There are others as well, but those are my kind of my go-to. Um, in this case, I'm using Eye of Round. I picked up at Sam's. It was about $3.48 a pound, untrimmed. Had to ask for it from the butcher in the back. It's still gonna be vacuum sealed. If it's on the star foam, like in the in the wrapped plastic, um, then, it's, then it's already been trimmed and you're probably gonna pay more for it because of the butcher's labor. Um, so if you can get the untrimmed, you could save a few bucks. I mean, that's really up to you. It, it is, you know, it's going to take you an extra 15, 20 minutes to trim off the silver skin. Um, so it's just, you know, value versus time. It's up to you. Uh, if you are going to trim it yourself, get you a good boning knife. I'll put a link in the description for this one I'm using. It's not like a super high-end boning knife, uh, but it is super sharp and it's easy to sharpen. It has a really good handle on it. If, if you uh, need a bigger handle for control, uh, this, this knife is excellent for the price. The main goal here is to get the silver skin off of it and get it ready to be seasoned. So there's no like right or wrong way to season uh, roast beef. I mean, obviously there's different types, like if you're going Chicago style or Philly or whatever, but um, you know, you have probably seasonings that you like. Uh, I suggest you use your seasonings. In this case, the last time I did roast beef, I did a rotisserie, um, a rotisserie style. This time I wanted to do it in just straight up in the oven and just roast it so I could collect all of the drippings and just make a, a more flavorful au jus uh, sauce. So uh, what I did here is I, I'm injecting the beef. Do you slipper the hot beef injection? I did two cups of water to four teaspoons of beef bouillon. You don't have to do that. It's totally optional. Um, the more important thing is to just season it with a dry rub on the outside because you want to kind of get like a little bit of a crust going if you can. Um, I've smoked uh, roast beef. It, it really, whatever flavor you're going for for that particular cut, um, do it. You know, rotisserie, grill, uh, braise, uh, you know, just if you have a good roasting pan, um, that'd probably be, you know, the easiest is just in a roasting pan, like on, on a rack, uh, where the drippings can just fall into the bottom pan. I currently don't have a, a good roasting pan that has a, a rack that fits. So I just put this, I'm going to put this straight in, in the pan and, um, I'll pour a little bit of the broth, the beef broth in the pan with it. You can put onions and sweet peppers in the pan as well for extra flavor. Uh, you know, if you want to do uh, oregano or basil or thyme, uh, rosemary for aroma. Mallet, take in the aroma. <laughs> High five. So moving on to the dry ribs, uh, garlic powder, uh, onion powder, kosher salt, crushed black pepper, smoked paprika is what I did uh, in this particular case. I don't really measure stuff. I tend to just, when it comes to meat, I just cover it and get a nice even coat. Uh, pretty much equal portions or equal ratio between each seasoning. You do you if you have some go-to uh, rubs that you like for beef in general, do it. Start with that and then, uh, you know, experiment, you know, more in the future. My, my kind of using my base seasonings for when there's beef involved is going to be kosher salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and uh, onion powder. Those, those four are my usual base and then I'll do extra stuff on top of that. Uh, in this case, smoked paprika. You know, for roast beef though, you could do uh, ground uh, thyme or uh, rosemary, you know, whatever you're going for really. 
in my case, I wasn't too worried about the the uh, seasoning because ultimately, from a salt standpoint, you know, in this case, I'm, I'm going to boil the sliced beef in au jus, which is you know, uh, you know, a salty. It's kind of more salt based, um, so it's gonna take over most of the flavoring and stuff. But if you were gonna cook this and, and pull it straight out of the oven and slice it up, uh, you know, then that's where it really would matter. You, you know, you'll, you'll get that flavor that's coming straight out of the oven. A few moments later. So once we've uh, finished with our seasoning, I'm just going to cover in saran wrap. Uh, I mean, tin foil and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight just to let the the dry rub just kind of soak in and do its thing the kosher salt will help penetrate the meat and kind of pull in the other seasonings into the meat as well tomorrow so it's the next day we have our oven at 350. Uh, we're gonna put in our leftover beef broth or we can make a new cup of it if you want at this point you could put in some onions you could put in some rosemary, whatever aromas, uh, type seasonings you may want, bell peppers. You do want to let the stock get underneath the meat a little bit. Uh, if you have a roasting rack, a lot of people will put this up on a roasting rack and just let everything hang out below. It's up to you. You know, it'll work either way. If you want a crispy outside, even on the bottom side, you know, a roasting panel will definitely help in that situation. But again, for me, I'm gonna slice this up in a, in a sandwich meat, and you know, I'm gonna also stew it in au jus sauce. So we're gonna take all those drippings and put them in the au jus. So at this point, we are ready to put it in the oven. At, I have the oven at 350. Two hours later. Uh, your goal here is for about 135 in the center. Probably about 45 minutes in, you'll just want to start probing the meat uh, with a temperature gauge and see where you're at. And then from there, maybe every 15, 20 minutes uh, to gauge when you're going to need to pull. Uh, probably maybe the meat is at, if the meat's at 115, uh, go ahead and pull the tin foil off and let the uh, let the hot air in the oven dry out the, the outer crust a little bit, give it a little bit of the crispy edges. Pull it one, anywhere from 125 to 130, you could probably pull it. It's gonna continue to climb uh, even further for the next uh, five or 10 minutes. So, you, you know, you'll, you'll get close to 135. After that, let it rest for 30 minutes. Um, you could kind of drape the tin foil over it, but let it breathe a little bit so it's not just steaming the outside. Um, and uh, collect your drippings for the next steps. If you're gonna do sliced sandwich meat, at this point, uh, after it's cooled down, maybe close to an hour, go ahead and wrap it in tin foil and put it in the fridge for the night. You want the meat to firm up uh you know cool down and firm up for the slicer uh you could slice it you know any thicker slices right now as is if you want um thinner slices may be a little bit more difficult if the meat's still hot so if you want to do like more like sandwich meat real thin go ahead and chill it for you know maybe eight hours or so or overnight for the next day hello dr smith i brought you something to eat a sandwich. Sandwich. So we're pretty much ready to make our au jus at this point for our sandwich or for our beef. You can cut up a whole onion, add a bottle of Johnny French's concentrate. I'll put a link in the description. Two cups of water. You can add sweet peppers, bell peppers. Uh, and you know, if you want more onion flavor, you can add more onion as well. This is a good time to add your collected drippings. It's gonna really give you that authentic flavor. If you just do the Johnny Rockets, um, 
I just don't think it's going to taste as good as putting your drippings in there, so you really should do that. Uh, it really makes a difference in my opinion. You want to put this on low, medium, uh, let it come to a simmer where it's just kind of hot and steamy. You can put in oregano, add some fresh oregano, uh, sweet basil, uh, add in here. Uh, this is going to give us a really good salty sauce um, that we're going to stew our sliced meat in. Mm, boy. So this is one of my new favorite toys uh, for the kitchen. It's a meat slicer. If you like sandwiches, this thing is awesome. I'll put a link in the description to find out more about it. So we're going to slice up our beef. And from this point, we're going to drop it in the pot. And we're going to let it stew for 10 or 15 minutes. It won't take long because the meat is so thin. Uh, but this is going to give that meat that good, juicy, salty flavor. And from this point, we're really ready to start building our sandwich. We're going to do a cheese sauce real quick. <laughs> cheese? So, the cheese sauce. Uh, what I do here is take a jar of cheese whiz. In this particular case, I took half a jar. I think the jar is kind of expensive. In my opinion, it's like $6. I, the cheese will go a long way for several sandwiches. So I, I did half a jar in this case, about a fourth a cup of milk. Um, and then you just kind of want to warm it up slowly, not too fast. You'll scorch it, you know, uh, add some milk to thin it out a little bit. Add a fourth cup uh, cheddar cheese. Also not in the video, I do add a spoonful of sour cream. Kind of gives it a little bit more creamy factor. Probably like two tablespoons worth. Um, you know, you can kind of just mix it and then kind of see what you're getting with it. As it warms up, it's gonna steam out the water. So it's gonna start to thicken again. So you may need to add more milk. Um, you know, you're gonna have to play with it depending on the level of thickness you want so you can definitely add milk and sour cream to kind of thin it out a little bit or even just water um, but good stuff I actually put cracked pepper in mine as well make a, a slightly peppery uh, you can just kind of play with it. it's pretty forgiving stuff just don't scorch it just keep it on low heat keep stirring it uh, until you get it where you want it where's my sandwich so choose a bread you want, in this case I used a pretzel bun, um, we're going to slice it, put it on the griddle, give it a golden crust, uh, you can make bread, I have an onion bun recipe, I can show you this a previous sandwich we did, it turned out really great so check that recipe out. So we're going to put a little avocado oil on, I had some red bell pepper I wanted to add to my sandwich. Uh, we're gonna get our buns going on here, put some butter on them, get a nice little golden crispy uh, crust on them. And then we're gonna put a little butter on the bun, on the top bun, and uh, sprinkle some bagel seasoning on. And bagel seasoning is really good. It's got some like fried garlic and sesame seed, and, uh, crushed pepper in it as well. So moving back over to the cutting board, we're going to take our cheese sauce, slather a nice little layer on the bottom bun, and then we're going to take our uh, roast beef, we're going to pile it on as much as we want, the more the merrier. You can add your onions as well, um, unfortunately my wife ate them all. No onions. No onions. No. So from here, I'm going to put on our bell peppers that I cooked up in the pan, and then we're just going to drizzle as much cheese as we want at this point. If you want to add a little cracked pepper, you could do that. You know, just whatever toppings you like on your sandwich. So this sandwich overall is not really Chicago style or Philly style. It's just kind of, kind of my style. It's just what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on a plate, cut it in half for you, give you a nice little close-up of it. Let me know what you guys think about this video. I'd love to see your feedback in the comments. 
Have a great day. And what are those? Sandwiches? Oh, buddy, what's the occasion? Some sort of sandwich party? <laughs>